Building up enough money to finally take your foot off the gas and enjoy life is a great achievement. But the work doesn't stop there. In this age of flexible pension withdrawals through options like Flexi Access Drawdown, you need to ensure you have the right investment strategy for retirement. And that's likely to look quite different to your pre-retirement strategy. So what do you need to know? Well, that is what we'll be covering in today's video in order to help you have a stress-free retirement where you can just focus on the important business of enjoying life to the max. The things we're going to be looking at are why investing your pension drawdown requires a different investment strategy, the main considerations for investing your pension in retirement, and some examples of different pension drawdown investment strategies. If you're here for the first time, I'm Chris Bourne. I'm a UK-based financial planner specialising in helping people achieve tax-efficient financial independence. That's what my videos are all about, so subscribe if that's what you're looking for, and be sure to turn on your notifications to not miss a video. With that said, let's get into it. Investing before retirement really has just one goal, build up as much money as you can. But investing for taking an income carries more considerations. As James Norton, head of financial planning at Vanguard said in a recent interview I did with him on this channel, successful investing isn't really about getting the best return possible. It's about meeting your objective in the most tax efficient way. And that's never more true than when drawing income from your investments. Getting the highest return possible usually also means taking the highest amount of risk, and that's not appropriate when you need your returns to be more stable. If you need 5% a year, would you choose a portfolio where the indicated range of returns is between 30% a year and minus 20%, with an average return of 9%? Or would you choose one where the range is between 15 and minus 5, with an average of 6%? The first portfolio might sound attractive to some people, but the spectre of a 20% downfall in a very bad year could be extremely damaging if you're taking money out at the same time. The second portfolio exposes you to less extreme falls in value while still giving you the required growth potential and is therefore probably more appropriate. Limiting your downside risk becomes far more important when you need to make your money last throughout retirement. That's why it's essential to review how your money is invested as you approach retirement. Because instead of just growth, controlling volatility comes to the fore. Instead of just keeping costs low, getting value for what you're paying becomes the focus. So what are the main considerations for determining how to invest your pension drawdown? Well, clearly the first step needs to be working out how much income you need to live an enjoyable lifestyle. And that will require a bit of guesswork initially, but it can be refined as you settle into that next phase, whether that be reduced working or complete retirement. If anything, try to overestimate if you can in order to build in some headroom. It will only help your plan sustainability if you realise later that you don't need quite as much income and can reduce it. Once you've decided how much you need to take, you then need to decide how to withdraw it. We're focusing on investing your pension drawdown here. But don't forget if you've built up capital in other accounts like ISAs and general investment accounts, it may be more tax efficient to use those first or to combine withdrawals from them with your pension drawdown to get the best result. Even within the pension environment, there are other flexible withdrawal methods like uncrystallized funds pension lump sum, which can allow you to make more efficient use of the tax-free pension lump sum. So this all needs to be considered. The less tax you pay, the more money you keep and the more sustainable your retirement plan will be. I did a video some time ago explaining how to get more tax-free lump sum from your pension. You'll find that and many other tax-efficient investment planning videos in my playlist called How to Make Your Investments Tax Efficient, which I'll put on the end screen of this video and link in the description below for you to keep watching after this one. I will be doing a bit more of a dive into strategies for making your money last longer in retirement in this drawdown series. So, once again, make sure you've subscribed to this channel and tap that notification bell to not miss a video. It's all completely free. And while you're there, don't forget to tap that like button too, as it will help other people looking for this type of information find this video. So assuming your pension money is moving into flexi access drawdown and you've now worked out how much you need to take out on a regular basis, 
you then need to choose an appropriate asset allocation. Asset allocation just means the types of investments that you choose in your portfolio. And the actual allocation will depend on your own needs, as well as your attitude towards investment risk and your ultimate capacity to take that risk. But the focus is on reducing one thing, and that's called sequence of returns risk. What it simply means is that with investments, you don't get a steady, predictable interest rate like you do in a savings account. Instead of getting, let's say, half a percent a year, fluctuating only very slightly and infrequently, you may get 5% in the first year, minus 5 in the second year, and 12% in the third year. The average there over three years might be 4%, but when you're withdrawing money regularly, the amount that you end up with at the end of those three years won't be the same as if you just received a flat return of 4% a year. The order in which you get those returns makes a big difference. This is what I was alluding to when I mentioned those two different portfolios earlier on and why limiting falls in value is very important. I'll explain how it's possible to reduce sequence of returns risk in the final part of this video. But to give an example of why, let's say you need to withdraw £1,000 a month from your investments and the value of each of the shares that you own in your portfolio is £1. To achieve that withdrawal, you'd need to sell 1,000 shares. But let's say that in the following month, there's been a huge market crash and the value of your shares has now fallen to 50 pence. In order to get the same £1,000 out, you'd now need to sell 2,000 shares. We know that investment values will eventually recover after a crash, but you'll have less shares in your portfolio to be able to participate in that recovery when it comes. And that's why it's so important to limit losses and focus on the sequence of returns and not just the average return when taking income. The last consideration when thinking about how to invest your pension drawdown is, do you do it yourself or do you take advice? You are allowed to manage your pensions yourself in retirement and many direct-to-consumer platforms will offer the functionality you need to use flexi-access drawdown as well as other methods of withdrawal. If you have a good understanding of risk management, tax planning and investing, then you may choose to go down this route. I have said before though that retirement income planning is one area where I think advice can be highly valuable. There's simply more at stake and less margin for error when you need your capital to provide income to live on and it can't be replenished through earnings anymore. There's also the time factor. Retirement should be about enjoying yourself, not worrying about whether you've got your asset allocation strategy right or you're maximizing all of your tax allowances correctly. What value do you place on your time? So what different investment strategies can be adopted for taking income? I'm going to highlight a few broad strategies to you that can either be used in isolation or in combination with each other, including their advantages and disadvantages. The first one is a fairly traditional approach of combining risk assets like stocks to provide growth potential with secure assets like cash to provide a stable platform from which to take your withdrawals. Lower risk assets like bonds can help to dampen the volatility of stocks, but they themselves can still fall in value. So there really is no replacement for holding cash within your pension if you want something that doesn't fluctuate in value at all. This is called the cash management strategy. And to do this, you'd need to make use of the cash account within your platform-based pension. The accounts you hold on a platform, such as your pension, ISA and general investment account, should each have a cash account within them that you can allocate money into. This is money that isn't invested and therefore won't move up or down in value. What you can do is take some of the money that you've built up in your pension investments and allocate it to the pension cash account before you start taking income. A common amount to move would be, let's say, two years worth of income withdrawals. What you'd then do is draw your income from the cash account that doesn't fluctuate. You'd then wait for an opportune time to take more money out of the investments when they've grown to top up the cash account again, thereby reducing that sequence of returns risk. Now there's no guarantee that the investments will increase in value over a two year period, but historically speaking, they do over 90% of the time. So the odds are in your favor. If they don't though, you have a little more control because you can decide a strategy to deal with that situation within the two year period to better protect your pot. 
whether that be by reducing withdrawals or using other sources of capital. You don't have to wait two years to top the cash account up, of course. You can do it any time to maintain the balance and keep things running smoothly. This is what a financial planner would be monitoring and advising you on throughout retirement if you didn't want to have to think about it yourself. The downside to this strategy is that holding cash creates what's called performance drag, meaning that there's a certain portion of your pot that just won't grow. If you held 10% in cash, only 90% of your pot would actually grow. And that means if the return on investments was 6% over the year, your return on the total pot would effectively be 5.4%. You have to bear that in mind when working out what return you require. Another strategy that people sometimes use in retirement is the natural yield strategy, where they simply use income generating investment funds, choosing income units rather than accumulation units in those funds. You may have seen before that the same investment fund has these two different versions that you can choose between. With the accumulation version, any income, such as dividends or interest that's generated, is automatically reinvested for you. With the income versions, it's paid out, usually on a half yearly or quarterly basis. And there are some distribution funds that are set up to pay out even more regularly, such as on a monthly basis. The basic premise here is that certain funds are set up to specifically invest in higher yielding assets, like stocks that pay high dividends and bonds that pay high interest. If the total growth is say 7% in a year, 4% of it may be derived from natural income. And that's actually a common target for these income focused funds around about that 4% level. Therefore, if you needed a 4% return, this could be paid out to you from the yield. So you're not actually having to sell any shares in order to take your income. This then in theory protects you from that sequence of returns risk while still giving you some potential for capital growth. The downside here is that although natural income sounds great, it can be a bit of a fallacy because when stocks pay out dividends, that proportionately reduces their share price anyway. And also, whereas it may previously have been possible to get good yields from high quality bonds, that's not really the case now because the low interest rate environment we've been in over the past 13 years has pushed yields right down. And that's meant that managers of these funds have had to seek their yield in other riskier places, meaning that the funds are now more volatile than they once were. It is of course possible to combine these two strategies together by holding some income funds in your investments within the cash management strategy. You could have some regular distributions flowing into your cash account, and this could potentially reduce the amount that you need to sell from other investments to top up that cash account or reduce the frequency at which you need to sell. There are obviously other methods that can be used as a pension drawdown investment strategy, but those are probably the main ones. The only decision you need to make is, do you do all of that yourself or do you work with an advisor to help you formulate the right strategy?